So, uh, actually, for, for today, I um, just want to go um, together an overview of the GUI based deep learning tools uh, that can be used by the biologists, by the, the medical doctors, or anyone working in the in the domain that they want to use, they are, it's more comfortable for them to use a tool instead of writing codes uh, for to do their tasks. Okay, so uh, for for this um, this uh, type of tools, I can say that for any tasks that we can uh, we can have in the computer vision, that is the most common one, is the either image classification or object detection that we precise the object in the image or image segmentation that we, we segment the image or even more uh, for the denoising for image translation and so on so we call it task of the computer vision <clears throat> on the uh, parts of the tools so we have two uh, type of the tools either they are cloud based or they are local based, but of course that we have some local based that they have also the version of the cloud that uh, we can we can work on this, but we don't really go in that that part. So we, we can say that generally we split them into the cloud based and and local based. So we start with the cloud based in this uh, in this step. So one of the example of the the cloud based uh, platform that we can use is the the platform proposed by the by azure uh, microsoft proposed by microsoft it's called azure custom vision in fact uh, in the cloud in the in azure uh, we have um, actually i don't have the uh, skype here may I, if i ah, antoine il faut passer en vue présentateur pour voir le les slides normalement tu ça quitte la scène OK. C'est bon. Je, je vais me débrouiller. Merci. OK, OK. Désolé. Uh, because I don't see the, the Skype uh, on my screen. So uh, that, that's good. OK, so actually the first example of that is the Microsoft. Microsoft provide the Azure. Azure is the platform that can be used for different purposes, but uh, in a, corresponding to our work. So we have what call Azure Cognitive Service. That is the, the the model is trained on several databases. But if you wanted to use it for our own database, so what Azure provides is called custom vision. So in the custom vision, we give uh, our uh, data it can be any type of the data from plants, from microscopy, from uh, other other domains. Uh, then you you define what you want to do either classification, object detection, and so on. And then uh, you Give the either you upload it with the label, so you have the data with the label, or you you wanted to do the annotation there. This is the possibility. You up, just upload your data and you use some annotation tools that are there and you, you use it. At the end, it um, can apply the the methods based on what you you want. Several one method or several methods uh, with on several iteration, and then then it gives some uh, performance on that such a precision recall or or others over the class or over the pixel and, and so on, okay? So that can be good for the explainer AI to see what are the features that are more important or what are the different performance, different criteria uh, or the meta evaluation metric that we, we have, okay? Either we can go for this or it can be more in advance. So you, you can have um, the possibilities called a model uh, sweep. So you give the data uh, in terms of the images, you give the, um, the annotation, okay, from the images directly from the images, or it's already saved in the database and so on. And you use the model uh, swap, uh, you give the grid of the, the model, okay, several models, you say that, okay, for example, for the model one, so you define that I wanted to use, for example, YOLO version five, for the model two, I wanna, for example, faster RCNN, for the model three, uh, till end, I want to several uh, several models. Okay, so you define the, the models that you you want, and then it go and do the the parallel uh, running on on the data. Okay, and at the end it will return the best model uh, for you that you can use the for the for the deployment. Actually, it's uh, not the only 
one that we can use actually each uh, big companies starting from the IBM Watson or or the Google Computer Vision or Amazon Recognition. So they almost give the same functionality, the same service, even at that some point they have the same name uh, that we can we can use. It's really good if we want to use these models later for deployment. It means that, for example, you are writing a code in the, the cell phone or in the Raspberry or whatever, this, the simple uh, computers, even age or, or or the computers, and then it just, your web, web interface, uh, it just receive an email, uh, image or a couple of image from the user, send them to the cloud, and then the cloud, it will uh, apply the model and then um, apply the model and return the, uh, the results. So there is, it means that there is no computation on your site, but it's good at this point, but at some point we should be careful because it's a matter of the, the ownership of the data and the, the privacy, of course, that all of these big companies, they guarantee the privacy of the data, but as you already know, even some, Times in the when we are writing the project or the projects are accepted when we are talking about the database that we should use to save the data, we are forced to use the databases uh, or the competition in the servers that are existing in Europe uh, because of the, the data privacy and the, and so on. Okay, uh, so this is something that we we can use, but of course if it's in the case even we can use some servers of the. Um, the big companies like Amazon or Microsoft in Europe or, or in France even uh, to use this, but it's strategical. Okay, so this is the reason that I don't go that much really on that. So, but just to give a view that we have this possibility to use the, these um, cloud-based uh, services. On another uh, hand, uh, on other hand, we have the local-based tools. So these tools can be used in the, the simple computers, laptop, or the server. So it's dependent to the, what you want to do, and uh, can do the the job for for us. Of course, that when we go to the local base, when we wanted to go on the parts of the deployment of the model, maybe it's not as easy as the, the cloud base, but that also can be can be simply solved by by using other other techniques. So maybe we talk later on that. So the first um, uh, tool that can be uh, can be mentioned here, uh, it's Elastic. So Elastic, it use you may most of you hear about that, or some of you already use it. So it can be used for the segmentation and the object uh, classification. Uh, in in that case, or pixel classification. Uh, it has a really interactive learning and segmentation toolkit. It's quite easy to use it's because it's user friendly, the, the environment. It has really big community. So any error or any uh, problem that you, you, you face when you are working on this uh, can be uh, can be addressed. Either it's, it's already exists. If you search it on the internet, uh, responded by the community or it is new. So you will receive your response in a couple of uh, hours or, or a day. Okay, so it in fact elastic by itself. It's using the uh, the random forest so, and some some features uh, if you you have used it, but it has the option of the it's called elastic neural network that you can feed uh, a model of the pre-trained model of the um, pre-trained model of deep learning so either you you can you can have it by yourself or you train it on other data and you use it or you can uh, download available models on the the platform uh, bioimaging zoo and then use it and apply it as a pre-trained model on your data to to do the test there is no fine tuning option on this uh, you can just use a pre-trained model and just apply it on your your data, okay? And of course, that it has some some limitation because maybe it's not completely adopted to to your data and so on. But that's a good option. Other problems or limitation that it has at some point it can be slow when uh, you have the large data sets. Of course, there are some uh, some hints or some uh, guide to how you can use data in the parts of the extension and so on to 
to to reduce this limitation and problem but still when you have the really large data set it can have a, a problem uh, so it, it's it will be a slow i can say and also it's limited to the expert option uh, export option so when you train a model uh, and so on so uh, for exporting it doesn't export everything uh, of course that you can you can do some modification to export uh, some parts of that but uh, it's not export uh, function it's not as good as we expected another uh, tool that can be can be used or you already used uh, it the q pass actually uh, then the the q pass uh, we uh, we can uh, we can have the same for the for the segmentation or the uh, pixel classification and so on so for biomarker scoring tumor uh, infiltrating and so on this is what we uh, we, we can use so on in general the image analysis uh, it support the large images and also it's open source it's uh, you can customize it it's it's quite good because uh, especially in a point, a point that it um, you when you mix it uh, with another app tool that I will talk about this is called cell post okay so then you have the option to retrain your your model okay so you have the data you have the annotation tools so as if I point my uh, have the laser point for example here you have some annotation tools or uh, you use a pre-trained model, for example, you uh, do the prediction on your model and then uh, if it's not satisfy you, you have the options. So here you select that, say that it belongs to this class, belongs to that class, and then uh, uh, fine-tune your, your model to, to work better on your, your new, new images. Okay, some, uh, some, some problems, um, so it's uh, at the beginning, for the beginners, takes a little time to to get familiar with this um, compared with the other tools. Sometimes we have a, some bugs. Actually, this is for one of for my uh, last presentation for uh, the training formation that we, we had. So we had one uh, with one of our group members, Sarah, that uh, the Q pass was just uh, do the prediction on uh, half of the image and other half part of the image was not was annotated. So that was really the software bug. So we try to, to to solve it, but that's something that may may happen, but it's not really common. I can see. Another suppose uh, another uh, tool that uh, is uh, quite common. Uh, it's called cell post. In fact, the cell post is the the tool that uh, it came a couple of uh, yeah, years ago. Uh, uh, recent, uh, there is quite new, I can say, uh, but we have two versions of that. So one the version fund uh, that was used to uh, to use the pre-trained model, so like the ImageNet or uh, the others. So we give the pre-trained model to that, and it was to the to prediction uh, to for us. But cell post two. Uh, came and it has the option of the the fine tuning. So as I said, so even when you uh, mix it with the the Q pass, so you have the possibility to do the prediction, fine tuning, prediction, fine tuning till the time that it's completely adopted to your data, and then you have this model and you can test it on the other data. Uh, so some of the advantage of that so work with the diverse type of the, the cell like across a different imaging system it's python based this is if you know python it's, it's quite uh, quite easy to to use it for a confidential score for for prediction and the problem of that might require parameters adjustments uh, for optional uh, performance on the new databases uh, it can like the q pass i should still pose uh, so if um, uh, you can use them on the on the GPU as well, so you can connect it to the GPU. You, you should, but you should have the, the good GPU. You should install the good version of the co uh, coda uh, and could uh, DNN, and then you can you can use it. Okay. Uh, another uh, application that uh, tool or can be can be used. It's called uh, cell profiler analysis. 
it's a little older than the than others uh, so it came in 2016 and then the paper is available here so actually all the websites so we can share the 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 slides so you would have the the websites of each of them and also you would have the the publication of them so uh, the cell post so it's for cell image uh, quantification so we can use for the machine for for image classification and then the cell profile analysis and uh, the good thing is that the cell profile analysis is that we really have a good uh, image processing options on that we can uh, simply uh, customize or, or pipeline and similar to the others it's, it's open source you can you can take it or you can, you can modify it uh, on, on your on your system uh, compared with the other tools that we, we talk and we will talk uh, on the other slides its interface is a little uh, I can say it's not that much user friendly compared with other. Okay, um, and you need to have some programming skills on, on that. Okay, uh, uh, so the GUI or the, the graphical interface is not, uh, I can say, at the first view is not something that you, you, you expect, okay, compared with others, if you want. But from the functionality, it's as good as uh, as, as others, and we we can we can use here is there is an example of that. You show the background of the classes, and we do the uh, the cell uh, detection for for you segmentation. Other another tool that we we can we can use uh, on this actually this is it's more plugin. Uh, I can say that that uh, the plugin that is used in the in the image or VG. Uh, so it's quite uh, easy to to use if you are familiar with the Fiji and you are you are using the um, daily uh, Fiji uh, plugin. It can be implemented easily. It's just on the update you should uh, customize and select the the website for the deep image, and then you you run it. Uh, you it will be added to the plugin and you can run it on the on your your data. In fact, for the deep image. So you have option of to to access ser several pretend models for the segmentations, uh, semantic segmentation, instant segmentation, denoising, and so on. Okay, uh, image transfer uh, on on that. But as I said, it's just you can use the pretrained model. So you can, of course, you can change the parameters that we adapted to to your your data. But there is no pa the the parts of the fine tuning. Okay. It gives the the results. If it's good for your data, that's good. If it's not adopted to your data, you don't have the possibility to to fine tune it to adopt it to to your data. But for some type of the data, that's the the model. Because if you go, for example, to the bioimage uh, zoo, uh, there is a models. For example, from for the same model, it's have been run on several databases. Okay, and the pre-trained model are available there. Maybe you can find the, the one that is most adopted to, to your data and you, you can use it and you don't need to do the, any fine tuning after that. But if you need it, that would be uh, a, a challenge for, for this. So, so in other words, it's not a good tool to, to use it. Uh, another uh, tool that we can, uh, we can use, in fact, actually it's not a tool, uh, or I can't say uh, it's a tool, but I can say that it's not a uh, tool with the um, graphical uh, user interface. Uh, it's really user friendly notebooks. So you have the same uh, notebooks, uh, Jupyter notebooks, that the codes of the several models are written there. So may some of you already um, hear about that. Maybe some of you already used it. But you have for several tasks from the segmentation to object detection to denoising to image translation and so on. Uh, you have several models, okay, or well-known models or the state-of-the-art models. And in that, you don't need even to write a line of the code. All the codes are written there and are they, it's, it's in the uh, are, uh, in the, yeah, you, you can even you can see see it at the first view. Of course, that uh, is hidden there. So of course that there is the option to show the code and you see it. But it just asks you 
some uh, some question about, for example, the path of your data, uh, the path of your, your target, uh, and for example, if you wanted to use any data augmentation, you can just click and say that, yes, I wanted to use this, 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 the ratio of them. If you wanted to use any pre-trained model to do the transfer learning, you have the option to, to choose it. So if I wanted to just uh, show an example of that, that would be uh, good. I hope that you have this. So here, this is the first uh, the, the first page. So if you wanted to have the access to the to the notebook, so you should go to the wiki page. On the wiki page, you you have the explanation. For example, here for the segmentation network, you have a variety of them for a 2D, 3D denoising, a star disk, a 2D, 3D. So you have several super resolution if you are using microscopy, object detection network, image to image translation network, uh, registration uh, network, and so on. Okay. And I just, if I just open one of them, um, for example, let's go open it. So you see that. It's explanation. Even there, there are some videos to see how you can you can use it. Here, it defines what how you should define your your database, and then the later here, for example, there are some codes, but you don't see this. You just run it, so load the the key dependency, okay, and then here, for example, it asks you for a training source, training target. Uh, the name of the model that you want, the number of batch, number of step. So you don't write any line of the code because it's a zero cost uh, deep learning. Uh, but this is what you, you you can have. Okay. It's it's really good to to use. It's easy to use. Of course, sometimes there are some bugs uh, that you should you should play with that and so on. But mostly it works. It works very well. One of the limitations that it has, actually, it's based on the the Google um, uh, Google Colab. So all the codes are written in the Google Colab. So in parentheses, of course, that you can download it and just modify some parts of that and run it on your your system. But basically, it's written to be played on the on the Google uh, Colab. So the time that they they they, they wrote it in 2020 and 2019-2020, it was uh, the time that Colab was was completely free. Uh, but now that they have two premium options, so sometimes the training takes time and the uh, free uh, free option that you, you have is not uh, good enough uh, to so from the timing and it stopped the, your your kernel at the middle of your your training and you lose everything. OK, so it either you should go for the Cola Plus, it means 10 euros per month, or uh, you should go for uh, either you should go for the Cola Pro 10 euros per month or Pro Plus for 50 euros per, per month to, to be able to work on this. Otherwise, you can download them, do modification and run it on your 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 systems. So. <clears throat> another. Um, Tool that can be can can be used. It's called Napari. Uh, I think in a uh, couple of the last meeting or the meeting before, you uh, already from our team uh, made the presentation for the for for Napari. Uh, also, we have a video of that in the on our YouTube channel. Uh, for for Napari, actually we have the videos for the DPMG there as well. If you wanted to 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 use it, for for Napari. In fact, this is um, a visualization tool. Okay, uh, basically, it's come with the visual concept of visual uh, visualizing uh, that uh, you can visualize high-dimensional images. Uh, but as it has the the plugin support, so there are today there are I can say that the plugin for most of the well-known application even from the SAM that we saw in the last pre uh, presentation uh, or from other uh, other other codes, well-known codes, there are already some algorithms or some plugins on Napari that is available. So you can just download it, give your image to them and do whatever you want on this and you train and do the prediction on that. OK, so this is what we make a difference from that. Compare with the for some of you that are maybe for example using PG or ImageG, compare with that. So 
in fact, this is the Python base. Uh, so, and uh, for example, for PG, as it's for a couple of years, several years that we have it. So for some basic functionality on the images and so on, treatment of the image, so it's easy to, to use. But when we go on the matter of the, the deep learning and so on, so we are a little limited on the um, on the Fiji and Imagi. But as the, we go for the Napari, you can have everything because it's Python based and uh, you can, most of the, the algorithm of the deep learning are written in Python, either in the Py, um, PyTorch or the TensorFlow and so on. It uh, fixed the, the problem. One of the limit, some of the limitation of that actually this is the really new tool. Uh, it came in the, the first announce of the release. It was in 2020, uh, 2020. Uh, but the publication came for 2022. Uh, it's quite new, okay. So, but it has the big uh, community around that. So if you have any problem to to use it or there are some some error that's not known. So in, if you write, so big community that's uh, working on this, they can respond to to that, to to you, uh, really fast. Other uh, tool that can be used is a more web-based uh, tool. Uh, it's called Enjoy. So it's, actually, it came from the Institut Pasteur in, in in Paris in 2019. So it is the uh, it's plugin oriented platform. It's the web uh, web interface and the under interface. So it works with the Python and JavaScript. And you can have you can implement. Actually, there are almost the state of the art deep learning algorithms exist there. So that you can use it or adopt it with your data uh, to train it and do the prediction and so on. It's easy to to use. Okay. Uh, either you use a pre-trained model or you train your model from scratch or you fine tune uh, on your on your data. It's quite flexible and it can be can can be used uh, for with, with different people. There are some limitation of that is that if you wanted to implement it or adopt it to your 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 data, uh, so you need uh, some um, uh, programming knowledge especially on the JavaScript and so on, to adopt it or to take it or customize it for, uh, for, for, for your data. And uh, at some point, some uh, dependencies, uh, I find a dependency because it's used also uh, mini, uh, Miniconda. Some of the dependency, uh, it's not available and so on. So there, there would be uh, some problem. But in general, this is something that can be, can, can be used uh, um, really well on this. On the data. Uh, EC is another uh, application. Actually, this, at the time, uh, yeah, EC and Fiji were both well known on, the, on this, uh, this this area. Uh, but then the Fiji use a rocket. <laughs> it's more common uh, these days. But still, EC working um, and it's quite uh, good at at, at some points. Uh, so it's an open source bioimaging platform. Uh, you can have many plugins, and also these days it can use also uh, deep learning uh, plugins on on that. It's a nice uh, user friendly platform. And here is an example of them. You you can you can uh, see it. Uh, you need for some specific task write the, the program uh, on that. So this is like like a Fiji that you write a macro or, or something like this. Uh, you can you can also do the programming in that. That can be also a good uh, uh, good tool to to use. So all the tools, the local based tools that I talk about them, so they were open source. You can easily uh, download them, use them for for your tasks. Okay. Apart from them, there are some tools that re really can be useful for our work, but these are the tools that are, you should pay for that. It's commercial tools, uh, like for example, Appier and uh, Arvis. So at the beginning they were uh, open source, but Zeiss bought them and now they are implemented in the Zeiss microscope, microscope, or you can use also the um, 
the license of them, uh, use it even if you don't have the Zeiss microscope or any other microscope or any other, you have any other type of the images. So you can have uh, the license of this. You can you can use them on your on your machine or you can use the online platform, uh, the cloud base of, of them. So for viewing, analyzing, interpreting of the 3D and 4D images, so you can do the segmentation, you can use a file transfer, data detection, and so on. This is something that you you can do. You can variety of the tools, that, uh, options that you can have on this. It has a strong, really strong 3D visualization tool. You can easily uh, show it, uh, and uh, it's meet as the commercial. It's really can be can be compiled with many industrial standards. Uh, limitation of that, if I can say it, the limitation, but as it's a commercial, so you should pay uh, for, for it, for the license and so on, so it has a high cost. And for the beginner that work on this, so maybe it's not easy to, to understand it, but there are lots of documentation, guidance, and, and uh, the formation by, the, by Zeiss that they, they show how to, to use them. There are the two well-known uh, uh, application that can be can can be used. Another commercial application that can be used on this, so it has several options. It has a really nice, um, I can say, um, you had in interface, user friendly interface with several uh, tools and so on. So it's Imaris, so it's used for the visualization, analysis, segmentation, and interpretation of 3D and 4D microscopy images. It's quite powerful for the visualization. Do the do the deep learning task on on that. Uh, you have also other possibility to other type of analysis if you wanted to do on the images. Again, it's a commercial, so you should buy the license. At some point, license is is uh, it's, uh, expensive to uh, to do that. And one of the problems that are already reported on the internet is that um, sometimes when we give a large database, we have some slowness on the on the the model uh, on the on the system. So the performance and the, the speed of the works it reduced. And for the last thing, for the last uh, commercial uh, tools, uh, Hojins. Uh, so it's for the deconvolution and the restoration of the microscopy images. It's quite a well known uh, tool uh, that we can we can use for the 3D restoration and, and, and so on. It has a nice interface. It's easy to use. You can uh, work with it uh, really fast. Uh, some limitation again. It's commercial uh, application. You have uh, you should you should pay for, for for that. But in fact, actually, either just may you you are aware of this. But either you, for example, for if you have a task, either you can buy it buy the lenses that you have it in your institute, or for example, there are some institute like in, even in Institute Pasteur. So they have this um, this license. And you can, for example, for your task, you say that, okay, I wanted to use this for this period and so on. So you can uh, allow you to, to use it as a, as a service, but of course that you should pay, but it's much less than the, the, the license that you should buy it. Uh, you, you can buy it from the, from the company. So uh, other tools that I want to, to talk about them uh, are mostly used in uh, data science, but it's, uh, quite good for the deep learning as well because they give us an uh, option to have the the pipeline. For example, instead of uh, just every time give the images and then try and have a model to do this, so we define a pipeline for to make an uh, automatic analysis. So some uh, it's a modular platform nine. It's a modular platform. Actually, it's uh, proposed in uh, 2010, almost 2009, 2010. Uh, by university in, in Germany, uh, Constance. Uh, it's a modular platform. It's open source. I can say you can have the module uh, to for for each part of them. For example, for image uh, loading, for loading the image automatically go and load the images to do some some processing on them. Okay, or split them. So you can have the several module uh, for um, uh, deep learning. Either you define, you make your deep learning module by module. 
Okay, so we showed it in the the last MIFO bio um, uh, conference uh, last year. How we can have the module by module of the uh, of the deep learning or CNN models, or you can have one module that you just copy paste the code or the Python codes or the the cross point or PyTorch Py code that you that you have uh, directly on this, and the rest would be the pipeline that follow your 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 data. Sorry, I should on my cell phone. I should okay. Put on the vibration. <coughs> uh, you can you can use it, and it's really uh, it's uh, really useful for automation on, on that. Uh, an alternative for the the name uh, it's called Data IQ. It's is more commercial. Uh, pipeline uh, builder, so it has several deep learning algorithms already implemented on that. So if you buy to to use it, define the pipeline. It's, uh, it's quite the same with the, the concept of the name. You have the modular, so you use the module, so you define what you want, and it uh, run the several deep learning codes or one deep learning codes on that, and we give you some analysis. On the performance with the visualization, with the, um, uh, with the, for example, confusion matrix and and so on. Okay, the graph if you made it and so on. It's quite uh, good and it's it's run on your local server, so you don't have the the uh, the problem. But it's uh, I can say there are several tutorials uh, for that that can be used at the beginning when you want to use it. It's a little complicated, but after watching the, the first or tutorial, it's easily easy to to use. And but as I said, it's a commercial, so you should pay for the license. But what we uh, I I know is that should they give the um, the license for for free to the to the universities and institutes. Okay, so it's if it's for the academic purposes, the the license, it's the full license. They give it for for free. You can have it. You can install on the server and use it. Okay, on the on the local uh, local machine, and make the pipeline by that and uh, and do the visualization. And even for the deployment, it can be can be used as well. But the academic uh, license or the, that they, they give so it's just they give it for one year so then the year after you should again uh, ask it so they actually they don't need any any proof because i have the experience working with them they don't need the proof it's just an email that okay we need it for this year and then uh, they give you the the new license as a take home message on uh, on all these tools actually they are Somehow they do the same jobs. At some point, they have some options that uh, now there it has the, the limitation to do this. But in fact, uh, the selection of the tools it's really dependent on the the specific project that you you want or the type of the data that you want to to work on that. Okay. So of course for some uh, data or some uh, some some projects, so these tools are uh, important. For example, if you are you know that you wanted to fine tune on the, your your data. So some of these tools would remove automatically based on that. For example, you cannot use a deep image and uh, or elastic and so on uh, if you want to use the deep learning, especially. Uh, but based on your project, based on your data, you should define. Uh, you can you can define the, the the tools. Each of them. So we just mention a little from the the strengths and the challenges of each of them, limitation of them. But in reality, may they have more limitation and so on. So this is something that should be that should be uh, considered. But still, this day they used a lot in the the bioimaging um, uh, bioimaging uh, uh, society to to solve the problems if they want to avoid any programming skills. So I think that was the the end of my uh, my presentation, and I'm open for for any any question.